All right, my friends out there in Revit land, I hope you're doing well. With us all isolated, we, we you know, isolate because of this coronavirus. We're all working from home. I hope you guys are all being able, you know, finding it, um, the ability to link into your firms and to um, work remotely is working well for you. I know it's tough. We rely on communication, either on the phone or these videos to talk to each other. And uh, anyway, so I got a comment, ha, a comment from one of you guys. And the comment asked me to do a specific video. And I am gonna do that. So I interrupt this series that I was doing, which was only a two-part series about the material wrapping inside of a wall, to bring you this special request from one of my users. In fact, I'm going to switch over and show you the comment so we can go there. Okay, so I'm going to hit share screen. I'm going to share my, um, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Here we go. All right, so look at this. This is, <clears throat> Wait, where is it? There we go, here's my comment. So look at this. A, uh, I would like to thank um, Silva Tanakian out there for this comment. And Silva Tanakian comments on a video that I made back in the day called Ceiling Tags, Two Ways to Do It, okay? And here's the comment. Thank you, and so, that was very helpful, thank you. I appreciate all your praise, but I mostly want you to learn something. So here, the comment continues. Can you please demonstrate a custom ceiling tag, which also describes the ceiling material or the material finish? Thank you, okay? So that is what we're going to do today. I wanna to show you guys how to make a custom ceiling tag that pulls more information or has more information in it than the typical ceiling tag. All right, so what I'm gonna do is share Revit with you guys, back, back to Revit, and we'll go from there, okay? So here we go. <clears throat> I am going to share my little Revit. Well, that's not Revit, this is Revit. And this is me trying to stay out of the way, trying to stay, stay out of the way. Oh, can't be right in the middle. Can't be right in the middle. Can't, uh, can't, can't block the browser. Gosh. Anyway, I'm just gonna put my picture right over here. <clears throat> so here we go. Let me take you into our small building. We know the building. We are used to seeing this little building here. Wait for it, there it is. And if we go into the first floor plan, this is our plan, okay? And there is a reflected ceiling plan of this building. So I'm gonna go there, reflect the ceiling plan, bam. Okay, so you'll notice we have a couple different ceiling types going on here, okay? This is an acoustical tile ceiling in this conference room. And up here is a gypboard ceiling in the bathroom and also in the main lobby. And so. What I want to do is put a tag on those, and I can type TG on the keyboard, okay? And a tag will pop up. It, it'll tag anything that you want to tag. You know, you guys know this. TG is the shortcut, but I could tag a wall. I could tag a window. I could tag a door. But in this case, we're tagging ceilings. So when I tag a ceiling, it puts in that it's eight feet tall. And it just so happens that the one in the bathroom and the lobby are also eight feet tall. So here. After you've tagged the ceiling, you can actually grab the tag and move it to a different location, you know, a different location on your ceiling, and it doesn't disconnect from your ceiling. If you pull the tag all the way off into the middle of nowhere, it stays connected. So be careful not to just move it to random places. The, P the contractor won't know which ceiling you're tagging. So it's best to keep it on the ceiling itself. Okay, so let's talk about this. <clears throat> if we go to put more information, we want this tag to pull more information. I just want to tell you guys that ceilings are a system family, okay? 
And to understand ceiling families, you they're made up of layers, okay? We've got maybe on the, uh, on the jipboard ceiling, we've got the jipboard layer and maybe some structure that's holding it up. And on acoustical tile ceiling, we've got the tile and then we've got the framing and we've got the little metal brackets. They're, we've got, they're made up of layers, ceiling, uh, not the uh, uh, system families. Okay, walls are a system family. They're made up of layers. Roofs are system families. They're made up of layers. Soffits, you know, things like this. Floors, they're made up of layers. System families have multiple different materials in them, multiple different materials. In a wall, you might have the, let's just say it's a brick wall being held up by wood studs. You've got the jipboard on the interior, and then you've got the wood stud, and then you've got some sheathing and, and an airspace and brick. You, you've got the layers. And so if you were to tag that and say, what's the material? Revit can't pull the material of the system family because there are multiple materials and it doesn't know which one to pull. Is it supposed to pull this material or this one or this one or this one? So that being said, it's really still easy to place the material tag inside of a ceiling tag, I mean a material tag, the material property inside of a ceiling tag, but you have to use a shared parameter, okay? A shared parameter, and we'll share the parameter with the tag, and we'll share it also with the ceiling, okay? So that they can talk to each other. So without any further ado, I am going to now um, show you guys how to make a shared parameter and input it into a ceiling and then use it so that it works in the tag. So here we go. All right. First, we need to have a shared parameter that we can use. So if you've never made shared parameters, follow with me. Here we go. I'm going to go to manage shared parameters. And I've got a ton of shared parameters. They're in these different areas, like in rooms, I've got all these uh, shared parameters. In areas, I've got these parameters. I get tons of par parameters, lots of parameters, okay? But let's suppose you didn't. If you didn't have a shared parameter file, a shared parameter file is nothing more than a, a holding tank. It's kind of like a, a little folder or a little library of where you keep your shared parameters so that you can use them in tags, you can use them in your project, you can, you can add them to different objects and different projects. So it's just a holding tank, okay? So if you don't have a shared parameter file, you could hit create. I'm just gonna do that with you right now, okay? I am going to put one on my desktop. You guys can put it anywhere you want in your whole project, on your whole server, and then point Revit to it. But here we go. When I hit create, I tell it I would like to put it on my desktop. Why not? That sounds like a good place. I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a name. Um, Mike's shared parameters. Okay. You guys would probably want to name that something uh, that has your firm name in it. Okay. So here we go. When I hit save, this is my holding tank. It's ready now but it has no parameters and no groups. So we gotta make a group. Let's make a little group. I'm gonna call it ceilings, okay? We can make another group called rooms for all the room parameters. And we can make another group called floors for all the floor parameters. It's just for organization purposes, okay? You could make a group called all my parameters and not organize them at all. Not the greatest idea, but you could. So under the ceilings group, I'm going to hit new parameter. Now the new parameter that I want is going to be mm -hmm, the, um, I'm going to call it ceiling material, but I'm going to call it common name, okay? Because <clears throat> I made a, a shared parameter that was the material, it pulled the material, and it pulls the whole material name out from your computer and puts it onto the tag, and we don't really want that. I want the common name. So you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna call this ceiling material common name. It's not a length, it's not a volume, it's not a slope, 
I'm just gonna make it text. So work with me, just make it text. So I say, okay, okay. So I have made right now a shared parameter file. It's a holding tank and I've made a group inside that called ceilings. And inside that I made a new parameter that I can use at any time in the future that's called ceiling material, uh, the common name. Okay, you with me? But I haven't used it anywhere yet. So right now I'm going to go use it. So I would like to embed it inside my ceilings. I would also like to embed that inside my tag, ceiling tags. So I'm just gonna click on one of these ceiling tags. I'm gonna hit edit family, okay? And I go into the family and <clears throat> So here it is, here is the family that we're dealing with. And so I would like to make a new label. A label is how you add a parameter. So I'm gonna click label and I would like to place it right there underneath my, <coughs> excuse me, underneath my, um, the ceiling height. And I don't have it loaded into this family yet, right? I don't have it loaded into this ceiling tag family. So I'm going to hit new. And when I hit new, it says, go pick it, go select it. And so I go to select and under ceilings, there it is, ceiling material, common name. So I hit okay. And it brings it into my family. And now, as you guys know, you can hit this green arrow to push the, the uh, that parameter over to be used. Okay. And so that's what I want. I'm gonna say, okay. So it pops in here and it's like, ah, that's not where I want it. And uh, it's not exactly what I'm talking about. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to pick it. I'm gonna say, dude, I want you to, I'm gonna, I, I'm actually gonna go uh, move my name. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna edit the label. I want this to be organized. I want this particular label to be read. I'm going to look at this. I am. <laughs> here's what I'm doing. I'm making a new type. Uh, instead of I gotta get my face out of the way. Instead of just the standard label, I'm going to duplicate that and call it um, text um, under uh, the. <laughs> oh wait. Okay. How about one eighth inch um, aerial. There we go. One eighth inch aerial. So I'm going to make this one eighth inch aerial. Okay. <clears throat> Underneath my, my font here is aerial. There we go. Aerial one eighth. Bam. So that's pretty big. How about just three thirty seconds? Man, I'm just not having the greatest um, time making this. Maybe I should just left it alone. So here we go. What I'm going to do is make this 330 seconds inch aerial. I'll rename it to 330 seconds inch aerial. There we go. Much better. And it's going to be, wait for it. I want this one to be vertically challenged at the top <laughs> and horizontal at the center. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. I just like to keep things organized. Okay. So, I'm going to put my ceiling tag, my information right here. Okay. I want it right there underneath it. Okay. <clears throat> and um, did I set? Oh, horizontal centering is going to be left. There we go. Horizontal information is left. There we go. So it can line up with the one. All right, now here's the other trick that I like to do, guys. I wanna just show you this extra little trick. I'm gonna make this parameter have a prefix of a bracket and a suffix of a bracket, okay? So that my, when it's in the project, the ceiling material is in brackets so that it's, you'll see in a second how it works. So this looks really good. I'm gonna load it into the project and I'm gonna override the old one. And it is now embedded in the tag, but my project doesn't know about it yet. It's just only in the tag. So what, my ceilings don't know about it yet. So the information has to be in the ceilings and it has to be in the tag. So we're gonna insert that information, that parameter into the ceilings now. 
So here we go. I'm going to, we're getting there. We're almost there. I'm going to go up here to manage my project parameters. Okay. And my project parameters, it's not listed here in my project parameters. I'm going to hit add, ready, add a shared parameter, go select it, and there it is, okay. But when you bring it in to the project, you have to make a couple decisions. It's gonna be a type parameter so that every single one of my Jipboard ceilings has the same um, material and all of my ACT ceilings have the same material or my wood ceilings have the same material. So it's a type parameter. So, and I associate it with, and I check the box for ceilings. So this is how you tell this parameter to associate with ceilings. So I say, okay, it's all I have to do. And now it works. And you're like, what do you mean it works? What, what are you kidding me? Well, look at this. When I click on my ceiling, if, if I click on my Jipboard ceiling and I go to the type properties of this particular Jipboard ceiling, you'll see right here, the ceiling material common name, the common name is G, it's gypsum, or I could call it Jipboard, Jipboard, that's the common name. And when I say, okay, look what it does, friends. It writes Jipboard right underneath that ceiling, um, right underneath that, um, the ceiling tag. And whenever I click on ACT ceiling, if I open it up for editing, take a look. The common name is going to be um, ACT. I don't have to write uh, ACT, bam, okay? And it's gonna pop in there, ACT. So I just wanna show you one example of how this is gonna work throughout the project. If I were to go down to my families, one time, I only have to do this one time to each of my ceiling types. And so if I go down to my compound ceilings, there they are, look at this. This one is gypsum board. So I just have to add that parameter to that one. Here's, I'll just, I'll show you. If I double click it, I, it says gyp board. That's the one, okay? And this ACT, two by two, has ACT as its common name. This one, two by four ACT, it needs ACT as its common name, okay? Work with me here. Here's wood joists. I'm going to add wood. Wood is my, um, the common name of the, the product, the uh, product that's attached, the finish, wood. And so I make that one wood also. So that's it. That's all I had to do. I had to just insert that information into each of my different compound ceilings. And now, friends, if the bathroom or the lobby, let's say the lobby changes from jipboard to wood finish, I can pick the ceiling. And over here in my properties, I can simply change this to being a wood ceiling. And there it is. Not only do I get the update of the graphics, the wood pops in, the ceiling changes, but the tag also updates with the common name of the material that's there, okay? So I just wanna let you guys, I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. It's really cool. And it doesn't take long. It's a shared parameter that's embedded in the ceiling and it's also embedded in the tag. So I hope that helps you. Um, Silva, thank you for your questions and your comment. Anybody that has any questions, you can put them in the comments below. Or if you've got more suggestions or requests for a new um, Revit video, Revit tip, just let me know. All right. Until we meet again, I hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day out there. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.